hope, and love. Those are the three most powerful things on earth to me. If I could have those three things in my colors and my textures, I'd have all I needed, just right there. I idolized my mother. She was, she was the greatest lady I've ever known and uh, gave me so much and was always there for me. Every morning I would wake up and I'd hear her making coffee and she would be at the window and she'd say, Flavia, something very, very wonderful is about to, feel, is, is about to happen. I can feel it. It's going to happen today. And that was how she saw every day of life. And it didn't matter that nothing wonderful happened. Something bad could happen. But every morning she began again. And that's what she believed. She told me one day, Flavia, hope is inside of us. It's, it's way inside. Whether you're thinking about a test at school or whether you're thinking something serious, worried about something's going to happen, you don't have to give yourself hope. You have to find it inside because it never dies. And then she'd say things like, do you, do you feel it right now? Feel it. Don't you feel hope inside? Yes, Mom, I do. She was a magician at sewing. She was so creative. No one taught her. She just had taught herself. Mm -hmm. And I have inherited a lot of that from her because she taught me that uh, you can indeed do anything, but you, you have to believe in yourself. That's the main thing that I learned from Jack and my mother is if you have to believe in yourself because You'll never do anything if you don't. And this is Jack, my uncle, who was a magic kind of a man. And it's the way Jack looked at life. That whole thing came down to Jack. Jack was just, uh, he was filled with magic, showing me wonder and magic in the world, and I never forgot it. And it was like, uh, oh, so this is what, this is the way life is this way. And I got it from both of them. And I think how, how, how rich I am, you know. Forget making a living at it, but how rich I am just to, to have learned the romance of life, of life that they, it's the way they saw life. I used to talk to the moon at night, and I would uh, talk about my, uh, how I hated my name. And I wanted it to be like uh, something someone could pronounce, and I wanted to be like the other kids. My name was a big part of my problem then and also where we lived because it was by the dog food plant and the tire factory and those things I let them become very important to me and uh, I would cry when I at night when I would talk to the moon and he heard me one night talking and so he said you want to change all of these things inside of you and he said you know what the only way you can change them is to change the way you feel about them and he was only if I was nine, he was like 16. It was like he knew at this age, he knew what life was and he knew how to look at it and he wanted to share that. If you change how you feel about yourself, none of those things will matter. You don't have to make them go away. They just won't matter. And uh, he told me that uh, there was a Princess Flavia in a book called The Prisoner of Zinda and it had been made into a movie. And she was this beautiful princess, and the, and the hero loved her. And he said, your mother saved that name for you. She saw it in a, made into a play when she was a little girl. And she made up her mind, if she ever had a daughter, she would name you. So you're named after a princess. And he said that uh, uh, there's so much wonder in the world, and you'll never see it if you don't believe that it's there. And so I remember it's like I had swallowed some wonderful, knowledgeable p pill about life. And he said, I want to ask you something. What do you see in the sky? Look up at the sky. And this was in the afternoon. And I said, I see clouds and I see... Uh, he said, now look over the tire factory, way up into the sky, what do you see? It's clouds and blue. And he said, uh, no, he said, those are your tomorrows up there. They're all waiting for you. Everything he told me then has affected my life so that it affected the people I was around. And then when this, when we have this business, we had this business. I, I've had trunk loads. I have seven trunk loads. I know this is sound funny. I mean, I'm nobody. I'm just ordinary woman. 
but I had received so much fan mail when we were manufacturing the things ourselves. I want to say, Jack, see what you've done? This is what I've done. There are all these people out there, all these people, none of them know each other, but they're all seeing life the way you told me to see it. And that's a, that's a wonderful thing. And, and it's still going on. I feel passionate, absolutely passionate about, about color. To a point that, you know, I buy, I buy shoes the wrong size because they don't have my size and I like the color. One of the ways I came, an example of that is one of the ways I came up with a palette that I'm probably still doing, uh, maybe for, was about 15 years ago, that I was doing my laundry. I was painting, of course, and I went in and saw the laundry piled up on it. We had a black and white checkered uh, floor. And so I went in and I thought, God, that looks great. And I wasn't thinking about a painting or color, but I started, and so I wrote down the color, this olive color potholder that was next to these pair of socks, and I, because it was like a, I had to, I had to paint that for my laundry and from a walk in the market that I'll see, I'll see avocados and squash and tomatoes, and then there'll be an apricot that someone has put over there by the avocados, and that color looks so great together. So it's, it's my feeling, I mean, I get so excited about colors and the way they are presented, and it's usually when they're kind of, there's one out of place, because my eye is drawn to that. Art is communication, especially with us, because we communicate feelings. I don't paint or write for greeting cards. There's not a greeting on them, sometimes to say happy birthday, but mostly it's, it's a message that someone's going to say to someone else, like, uh, uh, if I could sit across the porch from God, I'd thank him for lending me you. Now, there's not a person that doesn't think that way about someone, and so that's the kind of cards that I write, because oftentimes it awakens something inside someone, uh, that thought. In a broad sense, that's how we say in many, many different ways what people feel but can't, but can't say. Understand, I never planned to have this be a, a living. I mean, I, if we could get through it and pay the rent and, you know, the, pay the doctor or something, it would be okay if we, if we could just keep doing this. That's all I need, God. Just, just keep doing this. Mm -hmm. And never had any, never did I say, I'm going to be an artist. I want to be an artist and I want to be able to paint giant paint. It was nothing. It was just, just, just let us have this much. And then I would go to the next step and finally we got into a store and I started painting larger paintings and it just kind of grew. I could have made my living probably just selling fine art, but I'd rather a thousand or a million people see the image on one card if it makes them feel really good and, and they pay what, two dollars or three dollars than have one painting hanging in someone's home and just let them see it because it's not, I don't paint landscapes or florals or I, I paint feelings and I would, I knew, it, to me it mattered more that I could reach more people. People need to understand that they're not alone with their feelings and that's this whole thing because none of us are, none of us is alone. Because I have this giant love affair with life and I want to put, I want to say as much as I can about it about the humanness of it uh, before I go away. That's really what it is, I think. My love, my, love of, my love of the romance of life. Seeing the beauty and the wonder that is in it and recognizing that you're part of it. And I don't think of life as having endings. I think of them all as new beginnings.